Howdy guys, I'm Jared. And this is Brendan. And we are here tonight with something very special for you guys. It is the Blast and Battle Batcave from the Batman Power Attack line. The line we have championed since day one. Now of course this is our very first playset review. And there's a good reason for that. Of course we don't get a lot of playsets in mass retail toy lines anymore. Uh, let alone playsets that aren't some sort of ridiculous vehicle at the same time. So this is, this is a rare treat in the action figure world in this day. And another thing that makes this playset so special is that it is the very first 6-inch scale Batman playset of any kind. Yep. Before now, all Batman playsets, which have mostly just been Batcaves, have been 5-inch scale. Now this being such an unusual item, the format for the review is going to be a little bit unusual, so just bear with us and we'll do the best we can. So the first time that I saw any pictures of this uh, Batcave, Brandon, it was uh, in a very incomplete state. Mm -hmm. um, the prototype that Mattel was shopping around and had some promo images done of uh, it looked pitiful, really. It was completely empty. There was nothing in it. Yeah. It was just kind of these uh, expanses of space and what looked to be kind of a gray structure with uh, a garage door that kind of opened. There wasn't even a bat computer at the top or anything like that. It looked like an empty castle with yeah. a bat symbol at the top. So I thought we were really in trouble when it came to the Power Attack uh, bat cave, but thankfully the designers at Mattel has spruced it up a little bit and made quite a nice little set. Definitely. Uh, this set, before we get any further, will run you about $40, $41. I don't know if it's been seen at retail anywhere, but we got this one on Amazon, and uh, the list price there is $41.99, 98 mm -hmm. cents, something like that. About $42. But So it should be 40 at retail, approximately. Clearly, uh, before we go any further, we should point out that it does not come with this Batman and Robin figure. Or and the it Batmobile. Yeah. Right, or the Batmobile itself. But it does come with a Batman figure. Mm -hmm. It is the uh, slightly limited articulation uh, Batman figure we see here, but of course we'll be looking at that a little more closely in just a moment. So without further ado, let's have a closer look at the Blast and Battle Batcave. Alright guys, and here is our closer look at the front of the Batcave. Now, uh, as we can see, the front is actually pretty plain and one of the main detractors of the set. Yeah. So sorry to start the review on a down note, <laughs> but it only gets better from here. So, um, The question really is, why is there a front of the Batcave? Shouldn't this area sort of be underground? Or if not underground, because this is clearly where the Batmobile comes out, shouldn't this be like a hidden like so hillside or something? Like, why is he advertising that he's Batman inside? <laughs> like, this is this because has got to be... It's fun. I, I actually <laughs> like this. I uh, really like that there's I like a it too, but there. it's like, this has got to be like like uh, like a half a mile away from Wayne Manor. Mm -hmm. And there's this big Matt that's symbol on the front. Alright, so um, basically some of the features of the front that are worth mentioning is this really cool sculpture of the rock here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the only good things. Uh, the problem is it's... It's just rock. It's just gray rock, so you're not going to get much visual variety here. Um, one of the other neat things is some of the cool kind of technical sculpting that's on this uh, drawbridge, I guess you could call it. Mm -hmm. There's the uh, neat little bat symbol here. And as, as you can see, it's kind of a transparent sort of uh, blue plastic, as yeah. you can kind of see my hand back here when I move it around. Uh, so that's neat. It gives it kind of a techie sort of Tron uh, feel to it, I mm -hmm. guess. Uh, the bat symbol itself up here is made of a uh, sort of kind of rubbery hard plastic, so it can sort of bend. Um, but it's uh, really a hard plastic on more of a rubbery mount, so uh, pretty cool. I like that. I don't. I don't think it's gonna break off. You know, no, really. it, it feels pretty solid on there. Seems like it's on there pretty well. And uh, of course, we can see over here. This is a plug-in part where you have to plug in this area, and uh, it matches up to the rest of the side of the cave right there. As you can see, the rock pattern continues on the side and goes all the way up to here. And over here on the side, we can see the elevator, which we'll get to in a later part of the review. But uh, either way, it follows that rock pattern, so it has a consistent look to it. There's a, there's a little bit of inconsistency between the two sides. Uh, there's not quite as much detail in this half of the rock face over here. Uh, and it's also colored slightly differently. I don't uh, really know uh, why that is. And here's the lowering gate for the Batmobile right here. You just push through. There's no mechanism. There's not a button you need to push to release it or anything. You just shove it down. Uh, there's a little clip up here. Uh, it's actually kind of difficult to just sort of ram the Batmobile through 
Uh, but I think over time this peg is going to wear down some, it'll be easier. So here we have the top of the cave, and of course we see that there is this zip line, which is a steel kind of pole. It's actually just like an antenna that would be on an old stereo, and it even revolves over here on this little ball joint. So pretty cool, mm -hmm. and it clips right in here into this rest. There's a small panel over here that flips forward on the package. This is actually the spot where they recommend that you put the gun turret. Um, it doesn't lock in anywhere. In fact, this is just a freestanding piece, so you just sort of rest it on there, uh, stand a figure up there. That's one thing I really wish they had done is have a place for it to lock in yeah, because right. it feels very uh, kind of rinky-dink, sort of unofficial. What would have been good is multiple points, like if there was just a general socket mm -hmm. on the bottom where you could stick it anywhere you wanted to. But... All right, guys, and as we can see, here's the top of the interior of the back cave. Now uh, we have this metal pole which serves as the zip line, and here is the pack-in Batman figure I discussed earlier. All we got to do is take this. And uh, this clip revolves around here, and so you can have Batman go down in any angle you would like. It doesn't lock up here or anything, so it's always going to rest down here. Mm -hmm. Simply take this, and you have a few different choices for clipping it. You can even clip his leg to it if you wanted to, but it's really the uh, bicep or the wrist are your two options. Uh, the bicep kind of works better for me. Alright, once you have him clipped in there, it's simple. He just goes down. Now to make this more fun, let's go ahead and explain the um, trap door gimmick. Over to this side, on the bottom we have the jail cell, and here's the trap door that leads into it on the top. If you set a villain figure on here, there are two doors that collapse, and there's a trigger mechanism here. Uh, and when you release Batman from the zip line, he'll hit the trigger mechanism and uh, collapse the uh, jail cell doors at the top. One thing you do is you take Batman's legs and you sort of extend them so he doesn't get caught up here before he can come down. And, of course, you just let him go. Boom. Perfect. This mechanism actually works great. Yeah. I've had very little problem with it. Uh, this is a separate piece that you attach to the mechanism to make the trap doors fall out. And I'm telling you, it's just a blast because it's actually an action feature that works like a toy commercial would show. Yeah, so definitely. It works. It's ironclad. Unbreakable. I don't think that Batman has an obligation to feed him or give him medical attention either like they would in county jail. I don't think jail. it's legal for Batman to have a holding cell in the back I, game. No, you I, know, I, I um, kind of doubt it. I don't think he has No due process here, folks. Of course, the other neat thing about the zip line is that you can free it of its cradle prison up there. <laughs> And uh, you can have it go in any direction you like. So say if you want Batman to zip line over here, well, you have your wish. Because now, zip lining backwards somehow, uh, there we go, you know. You yes. can just go wherever you'd like. The actual zip mechanism works really well. This isn't just a piece of plastic that's flush up against the uh, metal bar. Uh, there's actually a small uh, rolling uh, a pin inside that moves along, so it's not going to get stuck on you. Also... Uh, if you move down the elevator, it can sit flat across the top like this. Alright guys, and here we have the interior of the Batcave playset. Uh, let's just give a quick rundown of what all these areas are supposed to be. Here on the side we have the elevator area, and uh, we'll explain how that works in more detail in a second. But basically, as you can see, the elevator has three different levels. We have this level, then it locks on the second level to get it up there. And then, of course, it can go up. We'll just leave that up there for the time being. And here we have the back computer console. Uh, it's covered with a lot of really good decals. Uh, you'll recognize the artwork as the artwork from the card backs for the basic action figures. And these all actually come pre-applied. You're not going to have to stick these on yourself. And they're actually very straight on the sample, at least. Down here we have the kind of garage area, the kind of bay where the Batmobile goes in and out. Of course, we open that up. We can see that the Ninja Turtles live in there. So <laughs> it is the sewer layer playset. Now, um, but it's really cool, uh, mostly because I like some of the sculpted detail down here. Mm. If we take a closer look, you can actually see that down here on the floor, the bat symbol and some treads are sculpted down there. Really neat touch. I really enjoy that. And it flows into the pattern of the uh, bay door on front, too. On the floor of the computer room, you'll see a lot of nicely sculpted detail. There's a lot of grates and rivets and bolts and things, so like a catwalk. There's some um, uh, there's some holes cut into the plastic there, uh, and then of course a bat symbol because there's a I believe there's a bat symbol on just about every sculpted part of this playset. Um, it's got in a really nice sort of a, a rusted uh, bronzy uh, like color, and it just uh, adds a little bit of uh, extra flair to the interior of the playset. Now, you may think that you have this figured out, but the holding cell is actually a little neater than you might imagine. What you have to do is it won't open like this unless you force it. 
Instead, you have to actually turn this knob. I got a closer look here. You turn the knob like so, and it opens. And Two Face has been in there messing about. <laughs> no, I understand that he's been in there for 17 days. Batman's been holding him against his will. You know, he's denied him his Miranda rights and everything. It's terrible. Yeah. The inside of the holding cell is pretty neat. It continues the kind of a cave sculpting as well. And it looks like there's a neat like locked mechanism back here. Of course, it is the actual technical uh, mechanism that the door uses, mm -hmm. but it's kind of a cool detail whether they meant it to be or not. The holding cell itself on the door has a bat symbol on the front. And it's just a very nice looking piece. As we can see on the side, we have this nifty little console here that kind of comes up on a pole. And we have some more artwork from the uh, back of the packages, such as Mr. Freeze and all of that. And it goes nicely and helps break up this area here that's a little bit more bland with the trapdoor. And Batman specializes in painting his trapdoors yellow, so <laughs> villains can easily see where they're at and avoid them. And uh, it just looks really cool. Alright guys, so let's talk about one of the fun little features of this playset that is a mainstay in most great children's playsets, the elevator. As we can see, on the side here, we have this bat symbol. Now this bat symbol works as a control for the elevator or along this rivet. Now what you do is you take it, and as you can see it's locked into the top here, and it's not really going anywhere. That means that the platform that is locked in right now is pretty stable, it's not going anywhere. So you can kind of lock your figures in, you don't have to worry about it wobbling around too bad. In order to move it, what you have to do is take the symbol and turn it. This unlocks the mechanism and allows you to move down. Now, this locks in when it gets to this level. And as you can see, now the elevator platform is lined up to where your figures can walk across and go to the computer console area if your figures could walk. <laughs> and now, uh, of course, once again, turn the bat symbol down. It goes down. It doesn't lock down here, unfortunately. There's not much of a reason to, as there's only this small opening for your figures to get through. There's nothing it really leads to down here. Yeah. So once again, the gist is, you just turn it up. It has that satisfying kind of click, that lock right there. Once again, up to the top, and it locks there. So one of my criticisms of the playset actually is on the bottom level here. Uh, like Jared mentioned, there's not really anything for him to do once he gets down there. They can come out of the back like this, but it would have been nice if there were another door, like on the second level, for them to come out uh, right next to the Batmobile. Uh, you could bring down the elevator and have Batman jump into the cockpit as it's leaving. That would have been really cool. Uh, it, it just, um, I think it probably would have uh, hindered the stability of the column for the elevator though. So it's it's a solid on the inside. Uh, so it's unfortunate, but uh, I think it was just a design choice or a mechanical choice. And here is the freebie pack-in Batman that's included. Um, now the original press images that we saw uh, showed off a, uh, a weird metallic silver Batman. And what we got instead is a very sort of dark gray uh, Batman uh, who uh, really is in the 89 movie costume. I mean, uh, we, we usually get that kind of variant uh, for Brave and the Bold that was in the uh, Metallo box set. Uh, but this go around, he's included with the Batcave, which is a much more appropriate fit, I think. He's sort of a limited articulation version of the basic Batman. I think this same type of figure is included with the vehicles, uh, with the Bat Jet and the Bat Tank, or uh, whatever they're supposed to be. They're, they're pretty bizarre. Uh, but basically, um, it's got the same leg articulation, and he's got cuts at the shoulders, but he doesn't have joints at the elbows, and there's not a cut at his waist. Uh, so the the belt, the utility belt, is actually molded on instead of being a separate rubberized piece that's laid on. Um, so the chest is, in fact, a completely different uh, sculpt. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, the neck is a good deal taller than the basic Batman. I have here the basic comic book Batman, and you can see he's uh, he's really about a uh, at least a quarter of an inch taller. Uh, you know, so Brandon, something that's interesting to note is, uh, if you notice, the belt here is glued on there in a way that it overlaps part of the uh, crotch area of the figure. Now here, however, the belt is just a divider. You can see this whole area, this midsection, and all the chest, meaning it boosts his height up. So this whole belt acts as like a buffer to the body, whereas over here, this belt, which is a soft rubber piece and not molded, is actually just going over part of the T-crotch. So it's kind of interesting to see this kind of bump him up a little bit, and it's just, a, it's very strange that there could be that kind of difference in the figures. Yeah. His anatomy is just a little odd. I mean, you look at him and there's something, something just ever so slightly off about him. Uh, looks a little bit more inhuman than even the, the basic power attack figures, which are a little goofy <laughs> in that respect. Um, but, uh, you know, any, uh, 
anytime you get a pack-in figure like this that uh, has any significance, and in this case, well, with the homage color scheme, it's just a, it's a good pack-in idea, I think. Now his cape is uh, attached pretty much the same way as the basic figures, but it's a much different material. It's kind of a faux velvet, almost kind of a felt material. It's got a, uh, a very flat back, but the, uh, the outside is very smooth. Uh, it's interesting. I don't know why it's not the same stuff. I think this must be a little bit cheaper, so it's more appropriate for a pack-in, I would say. Uh, but it's cut the same way, and like I said, it's connected the same way. And here's Batman with the included gun turret accessory. Uh, his hands grasp onto these two handlebars at the same time, and uh, uh, he stands with it uh, pretty well. Um, it's He's a little off-center. You've got to uh, rearrange him... Uh, <clears throat> you got to move his legs to the hip a little bit to uh, have him stand flat with it, but uh, he holds on to it real well. It's not going anywhere. And then when you have Batman, or uh, or any of your, uh, not just the pack-in figure, but any of your Batmans or Robin can hold the gun turret too. You take it and you move it to the top of the elevator to the suggested uh, resting point for the gun turret. You know, guys, the one thing we all know about our playsets is that they're not any good unless you can add the appropriate accoutrement to make them very playable. And so, uh, really, this is one of those playsets where if you don't have anything else, I, you know, it's not going to be half as much fun because it is sort of an empty playset. It begs to be filled with things. So, we're going to do something a little bit different this time and show you some ideas on how to spruce this thing up using your pre-existing collection. Now, as we can see, we have this. It looks nice and all that. But, look at what happens when we add a little bit of these suggested items. You get the Batmobile that we highly suggest and we've talked about for so long. Put it in there. Boom. We've already got a much more interesting area with the Batmobile right there. And of course, all we have to do is add our pack-in Batman figure that we got. Put him up here, since we're trying to promote him this time. Any of your <laughs> Batman figures will work. Of course, Robin, you can always put in the elevator area right here, as if he is going around. And you can actually plug his feet into the pegs. Once he's plugged in, pretty nifty, huh? All right, let's get this thing sealed up back there. Now, we can populate our area with a villain figure. We have the Joker. We'll put him over the trap door because if there's one thing Batman knows, in every Batcave playset, the villains always spring for the trap door area for some reason. Of course, we can go up to the top now. Is that satisfying click here? Ta da! The Joker is in prison where he belongs. So, as you can see, adding a few different Batmans and a few different figures, you can have something really interesting. Also, if you have the Bat Tank and I guess the Bat Jet, I'm not really sure what they're called exactly. Uh, if you have those ancillary vehicles from the Power Attack line, you can put them in these areas and they look really nice. Of course, there's this kind of empty space that me and Brandon don't like very much. You can always fill it with some of your accessories. Another thing to keep in mind is the turret itself. As we can see, unfortunately, this thing is a little ugly. It's just a one big solid plastic yellow piece, and I think it is actually the worst detractor about the playset. They should have really added some more detail and something to this to make it a little more special, especially considering that this is kind of the thing they promote about the playset. There should have been some blue up here. I don't know, anything. The black missile is just a little... There's not really many black missiles in the power attack line, so it's a little strange as well. So I'll tell you what, to make this thing more interesting, let's dump this. And let's look at our bag of power attack projectiles. That's right, folks. The same projectiles that are compatible with the Batmobile mostly work in this. Here's one of my favorites, the buzzsaw accessory from the thermo attack Batman, or at least I think that's what it's called. Clicks right in, and voila, 3D. And of course, you even put in one of the swords from the Batmobile itself. Just something interesting, you know, to shake things up a little bit. And of course, the Batmobile can even use the black missile that this comes with. So uh, all the projectiles are interchangeable, and it makes power attack that much more fun. Another thing to keep in mind is these slots here. You can actually put projectiles in these and just store them when you're not using them. So pretty cool, or at least that's what I think they're for. I can't find another use for them. That's what I assumed it was. I will say about this, too, is uh, I think I would have really loved this when I was a kid because it's sort of 
like a child-sized handgun. Mm -hmm. And if it, if I'd had this when I was young, it, I would have been running around like it was a grappling gun launcher, uh, you know, like all the time. So well, that's what Batman's all about: is trying to make kids feel empowered by guns. Definitely. Gee golly, Dad, the Batmobile! Yay! All right, guys. So that was our closer look at the Blast and Battle Batcave. You heard all the positives and you heard all the negatives. But when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, it's really a very nice place. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, it's a lot of fun. And as we mentioned in the introduction, you know, a place that's are such a rare commodity, and especially one like this, that uh, you know, in, in the action figure world, to get anything like this at all is is a treat. You know. Of course, in this scale, it's even more rare. Mm. Usually, playsets and vehicles are only reserved for three and three quarter scale figures in this day and age. So, it's great to see something be in that larger scale. Of course, this isn't going to be everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. Uh, this isn't the realistic Batcave that you may want for your DC Universe uh, classic action figures, or certainly things like your uh, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City action figures. You know, it's it's got a very uh, childish slant to it. Um, it's not got a tremendous amount of detail, of course. Um, and uh, the color palette is, again, very, very childish. You know, as I had mentioned earlier, there is the uh, problem with the turret being so plain, just cast in the solid color, and that mm -hmm. takes away from some variety. Uh, there's a few odd color choices here and there, and there doesn't seem to be enough geography with the cave itself. It almost seems to be too much like a, uh, a box, in a way. Yeah. But um, all of that can't really take away from just how cool it is. For, all the, for me, all the good really outweighs all the negatives. Yeah. And it's amazing to see where this thing came from, uh, an empty like box that looked more like a hanger, <laughs> to really something very fun and very colorful. So in the end, I think that we would give it a 3.5 out of 5 star rating. You know, for us, I believe that it truly is a 4 star rating because we love it so much, but we do realize that all yeah. these negatives are a much bigger deal to most collectors out there than they are to us. Mm -hmm. It's about the best power attack back cave that we're going to get right now. I mean, in the context of that toy line, it's great, and it's, a, you know, like we said, it's a 4 star toy in many ways, but uh, as an objective look at a back cave, it's a, th a three and a half, you know. It's uh, there are a lot of positives, but there are some negatives, and it's just not gonna it's not gonna suit everybody, unfortunately. My advice to my other fellow collectors out there is to just let go of the nitpicks and enjoy this bat cave for what it is. You know, of course, you can look past some of the uh, paint applications, some of the design choices, things like that, and just really enjoy it for the fun little toy that, or fun large toy, should <laughs> I say, that it really is. So. Yeah, it's got all the classic playset features of old. It's got the zip line. It's got the big gun. It's got the jail cell. Uh, the drawbridge, uh, the uh, you know the gate that opens up. It's you know it's got it's got all your standard stuff. It offers a lot of play and a lot of uh, you know mini environments for your Batman figures. So I highly recommend this product, and I hope that you enjoy it and that you can get a lot of play out of it with all of your other Batman Power Attack figures. I look for more Batman Power Attack reviews to be uploaded all the time. Mm -hmm. There's still some old ones that we've yet to upload. Um, we're hoping to get to those really soon. Of course, we are going to be doing reviews of Mr. Freeze and Two-Face and all the other figures that you saw featured in this video. So until next time, this is Fanboys Forever. I'm Brandon. And I'm Jared. Signing out. Signing out. I don't get it. I need to be here and then there. Maybe I shouldn't worry about it and just kill him. I need help badly.